I'm Tom and this is my 2013 BW T5.1 camper conversion. Perfect! I've had this van since 2017 and when I looked at buying it, the market was nowhere near as strong as it is now. With the budget that I had, the options for me to buy were quite good. This van is a bit of a rare spec and I'll get into that in a minute. But essentially when I looked to buy, my first thing was budget. Second thing was I had to have air conditioning. I couldn't be living with a bond button van, especially not if it's going to be a family camper. and Secondly, I didn't want a white van. I've always liked to have something a little bit different and if I could get a factory van that's a different colour, that's what I was going to do. Thirdly, I wanted a tailgate if I could find one and fortunately this one came up and ticked all the boxes. So what is this van? This van started its life, before I got hold of it, as a service vehicle for Miele, who are a German high-end kitchen and dishwasher washing machine appliance company. They had a fleet of service vehicles and this was one of them. Back in 2011, they ordered, I think, anywhere between 70 and 80 from VW. And these were factory built to their specifications. So on top of things like air conditioner, electric windows, heated mirrors, electric mirrors, it came in a very, very bright red. Uh, this color is L551 Miele Rot or Miele Red. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, I'm not German. But essentially VW built these vehicles for Miele. You couldn't order this colour from factory unless you were Miele. So they are a rare vehicle. This van popped up on Auto Trader. It, a dealer up in Bletchley, up near Milton Keynes. Which from here in Kent is about two, two and a half hours, depending on how you get there. It stood out. It was the right price. It was the right van. Went and looked at it. And it was the first one we looked at. And they always say, don't buy the first one you look at. Well, I'd looked at hundreds on Auto Trader, but the first one that we actually looked at was this one. And it was perfect. It was immaculate. It had a little dent on the sill. It had done 96,000 miles at the time, full history. So why was it the perfect van? Not only was it the right price, the right spec, things that happened for a reason, check the service history, this van had lived all of its life within about five minutes of where we live. So it had been used locally, and then had been disposed of by Miele through the auction system and ended up at a dealer 200 miles away, and has actually come back to where it's lived all of its life, which I think is quite a cool story. My plan for this van was to build an OEM Plus family camper van. Taking what VW built and adding to it to make it what we wanted without ruining the original sort of vibe of it. From the outside it's lowered on coilovers, it's running van slams at the moment obviously with a hub mod and then to get a little bit lower we've done the machine T6 top mounts. In the back it's just running shocks and springs, all of the other bits of the coilovers have been lobbed in the bin and then cut the bump stops down, relocated the ABS wiring, all the usual stuff to get vaguely low. It could go lower if I shelled out more money, stuck some more expensive suspension on it but truth be told it sits well enough and as a family van it does what it needs to it doesn't often get stuck doesn't scrape and for getting on and off some of the campsites that we've used it's about as unusable as we can get away with whilst it's still usable 
This van came on 16 inch steel wheels, upgraded to 18 inch Amarok steels, and then subsequently since then, they've been sent off to Jamie down at Dutchie, who's banded them. They're currently a 18 by nine in the front, 18 by nine and a half in the back, running a 225 45 18 tire. And if you really want to copy me, they are finished in chrome powder coat. Bolts up the usual steel wheel nuts and takes the VW center caps. On mine, again, OEM Plus, I've gone for a T6 steel wheel 17 inch GP hubcap, which sounds a lot of words, basically means it's got the T6 vertical lines in it and a chrome badge in the middle. So at the front, it's running uh, aftermarket Xenon replica headlights, again keeping it with that OEM Plus look, running some HID bulbs. Obviously it's got a chrome Sportline grille, which if you look closer, isn't actually gloss as they come from factory. I bought this one brand new from VW, stripped it down, satin blacked it to match the bumpers. It's just a little touch that for me does it. And out back, it's running Caravelle T5.1 rear lights. They're very similar to the Sportline lights, but they're not tinted. And for me, I didn't want that tinted racy motorsport look. So first thing we did was get the windows fitted in the side. So it's got normal windows in the sliding door and opposite, and then blanks on the back just to finish it off and tidy it up. Then we had the Skyline pop top fitted. Now there's hundreds of pop top companies out there. For me, it was always gonna be a Skyline. Uh, I've spoken to Adrian that owns them. Their product is second to none. At the time, back in 2017, I think I had this one done. They were one of the only crash tested roofs on the market. Now they are fully TÜV uh, approved, which is the German safety standard, which those boys don't mess around. They have to crash test them and do all sorts. So if you're looking for a roof, Skyline, they're not the cheapest, they're not the most expensive, but in my opinion, they are probably the best middle ground. Different color canvases, ours stuck with black because it's a bright red van. It's very hard to add color to it without it looking tacky. We chose to upgrade to the Scenic Canvas, which got you the ability to zip it back and open it. It's just a nice little touch. Top of the pop top, you'll see from the aerial drone stuff, it's got a couple of 150 watt solar panels feeding into the leisure battery, which at the moment we've had a cold spout and the battery's dead. On the inside up front, we start at the front and then we'll jump in the back to go through the back. The front, again, has remained largely stock. I didn't want to go with retrimmed dashes and painted this and chrome that. I like to keep it simple. Uh, it's got the Lupo 3L wheel, which if you don't know what a Lupo 3L wheel is, it's again a rare part from a European specific model. They're actually magnesium. They're a pain in the ass to fit, but they look cool. This one is actually coming out very soon. I've got a replacement one that the leather's in better condition, so we'll swap that over. Stereo is an RCD330, which is a Chinese market VW product. Uh, fits into its 5.1, gets you things like CarPlay and a big screen, which to be fair, that's all we really need it for. Haven't upgraded the speakers in the front yet. That's on my list of things to do, but there's a set of uh, Vibe 6.5 inch speakers in the back, which is running off a Skipton Car Audio Loom. Hull van has been absolutely smothered in silent coat. It's probably the biggest improvement you can make on a van is to get rid of that tinniness and that drone. On top of the silent coat, we've gone with a closed cell foam for insulation, sound deadening. So far, so good. It's self-adhesive, relatively easy to do, and then your usual ply panels that are then carpeted. This van, rather than going for the all black, went for anthracite, just to mix it up a little bit. Seats in the van obviously have been retrimmed, which was a long, painful process. I'm incredibly fussy when it comes to attention to detail. And to find a trimmer that could do what I wanted to the standard that I expected was hard going. In the end, I found an absolute diamond aid at Mid England Retrims. I'll leave his details in the description below. Aid is the fussiest trimmer you will ever meet. And once I'd found him, it was just a case of finding the material to match. 
you can do a million and one things to the inside of these but one thing I didn't want to do was the standard Bentley sticks for me looking and drawing inspiration from the old school it had to be tartan not Westphalia tartan but something tartan I ended up sourcing this tartan fabric from Scotland shop uh, I must have ordered 50 different samples to find one that matched for me it had to have the reds in it to match the van it needed to have black in it to match the other main color on the outside and then if I could find one that had a gray that vaguely matched the plastics inside it meant I didn't have to mess around painting dashboards and I think this is the best I could find annoyingly within about 10 minutes of it appearing in uh, VWT magazine two other people have done it but you know it's always better to be a wolf and not a sheep another thing A did for me was to do the red seat belts just another little touch just to bring a bit of color onto the inside so inside in the back uh, let's start at the front we've got a Kiravan swivel seat gives you a little bit more flexibility when you're sitting in here followed by another Kiravan product the sliding door store this thing is incredibly expensive for what it is but it does a sterling job of hiding stuff that you don't need to see on a daily basis the interior as you can see we've got oh, some very fetching coats there is a tv which is a 12 volt sharp tv smart tv we can hotspot it or run usbs on it for the kids if we're on a long journey and then we've got a majestic wood designed kitchen pete up at majestic again another top bloke very very dedicated to the job that he does with the kitchens there's lots of companies out there Majestic stood out to me for a couple of different reasons. One, they build it for you. Uh, the Evo design stuff, yeah, looks good, but it doesn't come with instructions, or it didn't back in 2017. Plus, Pete at Majestic thought about what vans need. So little touches like you've got this lift up one here. So when your bed's down at night, you can get to your kettle is golden. See, when we go away to family of four, the kids sleep in the roof, in the pop top and then we sleep on our rock and roll bed. This is from Smart Beds. It's an Evo 2, reason went for it. It's crash tested. It's a solid bit of kit. Gets really, really good reviews and goes up and down very, very easily, as you can see. But as I said, the leisure battery was old. It wasn't particularly good condition. The cold weather we've had this week has absolutely killed it off. And um, I need to get myself a new one. Looking at upgrades, potentially an AGM battery, they seem to get a little bit of a better review. Or, I don't know if I can justify it, one of these lithium ion ones, but they're daft money. Um, aside from that, the only thing this van's really missing to make it sort of truly multi-purpose is a heater. Brad's got a planner, or I think they're called auto term now. Um, that's probably the next thing on my list that I'm going to get. Just means that we can use this thing all year round without being cold. But again, I need to save my pennies up to buy that one. We have it a very quick guide to this van it's been very well documented on instagram if you want to go and give me a follow there's lots and lots of background on it there but um until next time see you soon Today I've had to film this on my own, Brad was busy, but if you've got a van that you think we should cover, let us know, drop us an email. If you've got a business and you'd like us to come and have a look around you want to tell us your story, let us know. If you've got a product that you think people should know about, let us know. Our email address is here, which is workwithus at busbros.co.uk. Perfect.